Well, you know, 59 points, usually not enough to win games. But for this week, it was. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Walken. You know, Christopher Walken knows a lot about fantasy football. <clears throat> the main thing he knows, actually, the, the, one con- the one thing that I came away with when I talked to Christopher Walken about fantasy football is that 42 points will get you nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, your Twift Week 8 preview. We had me losing to Rampy horrifically in a game that should have never happened. Spencer taking down the I Mighty Seagouch. Popcorn Ready, the Weston, taking down Disco Habatos. And I'm going to stop making things up. And we're, we're going to leave that one for last because I have to rant. No Fried Rice for You taking, on, fa- taking down Clap for Bacon in a phenomenal game. The Night Owl taking down Ben, but barely. And then we had this fiasco of a game. We had the Cure Sucks starting three people on by and one person that was declared out seven days before he played. Now, what does this mean? It's virtually a slap in the face to everyone in the league. It's a horrific embarrassment for everyone to play everyone that plays fantasy football, and it makes the Cure Sucks the rat's deezer of fantasy football. Christopher Walken disapproves, I disapprove. Many other people disapprove. Simon, get your shit together. We're going to move on to the Week 8 preview now after that disgusting, disgusting display of a game pissed away that made us all look bad. And we're going to start off with a good matchup, Kevin and I. The drink of choice this week is orange juice for those that are interested. Starting things off... No pictures this week because I did it past Thursday. Matty Ryan, Tony Romo. Matt Ryan, eh, pretty good, ba- pretty bad matchup actually. Tony Romo, pretty bad matchup. Advantage Ryan just because he's better. Marshawn Lynch going up against Ahmad Bradshaw. Thing you need to know about Ahmad Bradshaw is the Q beside his name that means Kevin will probably lose this week. Bradshaw, questionable. Marshawn Lynch, probable. Lynch is also better. Advantage Lynch. LaShawn Filthy McCoy going up against somebody named Green on the Packers. That's all you need to know. McCoy wins. James Jones, Reggie Wayne, both have great matchups. James Jones had a very bad week last week. Reggie Wayne, Reggie Wayne gets the edge here. Malcolm Floyd and Mike Wallace. Both have good matchups. Once again, Wallace is less good, but Wallace is a better player. Advantage Wallace. Antonio I go all year only scoring 10 points and then go off for 20. Gates will be playing Jason Witten, who is the opposite, very consistent, good tight end. And for that reason, he will be getting the edge despite Gates having a Cleveland matchup. Eric Decker is facing off against Victor Cruz. Both have decent matchups. Victor Cruz is better. Um, he, He is Eli Pussywilla Manning's number one target whereas Eric Decker competes with Demarius Thomas. Advantage, Victor Cruz. Greg the Leg Zalurian will be facing off against Steven Goskowski. Um, Greg the Leg has a pretty crap matchup, but, I mean, he's Greg the Leg, guys. Come on. He's, he's like... He's like boxer in MMA, where boxer is MMA's tutor. He MMA is boxer's prodigy. Greg Zalurian is somehow connected to David Akers just because of how good they are. And I realize the StarCraft II analogy was lost amongst 99% of the viewing audience. But for the 1%, for that percentile of person that stuck around, it was great. And they loved it. Rounding out this week's matchup, the Steelers' defense and the Patriots' defense. Um, Pats are playing the St. Louis Rams who turn the ball over a lot. Advantage Patriots. Now, although Kevin got the advantage in a lot of the later portions of the matchup, I think I'll be able to overwhelm him at the top end of the fantasy spectrum. And by that, I mean quarterback, running back, running back, particularly at the running back position. I'm giving myself the advantage over the commissioner here. And I will need a win after that horrific loss. 
last week. Here we have the Night Owl, a huge surprise this year, going up against Aaron Rodgers. And if you'll notice, every time the Night Owl wins, one of one of her top three players goes off. It's either Newton, Sean Worthless Green, or Dougie Martin. Dougie Martin, I'm going to minimize this just so you can see this. He had a 33-point performance on Thursday. This is outrageous and will for sure lock her up the win because let's just fly through this one because basically the cure of sexist fate is already set. Cam Newton is not going to do as good as Aaron Rodgers. Sean Green not going to do as, as well as Frank Gore. But other than that, look at Marshall. He's better than Sidney. Julio Jones is on and off and probably just about equal with Larry Fitzgerald. Benny Watson and Jacob Tamey are both awful. Alshon Jeffrey is hurt, and the Cure Sucks has proven his ineptitude at managing his team. So Mario Manningham will get the advantage. Probably the first and last time Mario Manningham will ever get an advantage. And then San Francisco's kicker will be outperformed by Janikowski. Not that it matters because the Packers will destroy Jacksonville, who are lacking an MJD this week. Lily, you've done a very good job with your team this year. And the Cura Sucks, you've done the opposite. So Lily is going to get the Combat X Easy Pick of the Week, brought to you by Wasif Khan, Combat X. Stay easy, son. Moving on, we have the Fantasy Genius going up against Weston. Oh, wrong tab, sorry. Uh, this looks to be an incredibly good game. In fact, I will go out on a limb and say game of the week. Ben, kind of disappointing this year. Three and four. Weston, the opposite. Five and two. We have Andrew Luck facing off against Eli Pussy Willow. Pussy Willow is way better, even though Andrew Luck has a good matchup. Pussy Willow will outdo him. And then we have somewhat of an interesting matchup with Chris Johnson and D Mac. D-Mac, of course, has a good matchup. Chris Johnson is incredibly inconsistent, and he's playing Indy. Yeah, Indy. Advantage Chris Johnson. Trent Richardson's questionable, meaning he's basically worthless at this point. Advantage Jamal Charles. Megatron, the most overdrafted player of the year, will be outperformed by Steve Smith, which seems weird, but I'm calling it. Dwayne Bowe and Antonio Brown. I don't think Antonio Brown's particularly good. He's the Steelers' number two guy. And Dwayne Bowe is the only person on the Chiefs' offense that actually has talent, with the exception of the running back, of course. Tony Gonzalez is great. I mean, J you look at Jimmy Graham, you say, yeah, he's probably better. Well, Jimmy Graham has a Q next to his name, which all fantasy owners know is awful. You never want that if they're on your team. And then we have Michael LaShore and Randall Cobb, which is kind of cute because James Jones had three weeks in a row where he had two touchdowns in each game. Randall Cobb had two touchdowns last week. James Jones had zero. We'll see if Randall Cobb somehow goes on a huge touch touchdown streak this week. It, if he does, we still have to keep in mind that he played Jacksonville. So it's to be taken with a grain of salt, eh, whatever. I mean, it's still it would still be really weird. So I'm going to give the advantage, the advantage to Randall Cobb just because I don't really trust Michael Ashore at this point. Lawrence Tynes and Walsh. I'm going to call him Billy Walsh because of Entourage. Another reference that will be lost to 99% of my viewers. And for the 1%, they will crack a smile and say, I'm glad I clicked on this video. And I will leave a comment saying so. Anyway, um... Lawrence Tynes is going to outperform Billy Walsh, who got seven points this week. How do I know that? Because he's already played. Cardinals defense, Seahawks defense. The Seahawks are playing away, meaning they're virtually worthless. And when I say away, I mean not at home in Seattle. Advantage Cardinals. After looking at this week, I think Wesson is way too top-heavy, especially with Chris Johnson, for him to lose this game to Ben. would love to see Ben win, partially because Wesson's in my division. Partially because I think Ben is an extremely entertaining character in the Fantasy League. But I'm going to have to give it to Weston, just being realistic. Here we have Rampy, who takes more wins that he doesn't deserve than Terran players in the early 2010s. When maps like Close Positions, Lost Temple, and Steps of Gay were still being played. 
Now, this can't be attributed to anything Rampy does right or wrong. He just gets incredibly lucky and plays people like me that have half their players on bye weeks, and then their one running back that's worth a damn gets hurt. It's okay, though, because Rampy is sitting pretty at 4-3 and three in a very close division that shouldn't be close at all, but the Cure Sucks likes to intentionally piss away games with incompetence, so it is close. That's how fantasy football works, folks. You can try hard every week, and at the end of the day, if someone's a shithead and doesn't check their team, it doesn't really matter. Here we have Peyton Manning and Drew Breesy. I saw a stat on Drew Brees that was like he's thrown a touchdown in 50 straight games or some ridiculous shit. Therefore, he gets the advantage. Which is kind of a really dumb reason to give someone the advantage, but come on, it's Drew Brees. Matty running as his forte is playing an incredibly weak Carolina run defense. Kevin Smith, not actually good. Advantage Matty Forte. Stevens Howling is one of the main reasons Rampy won last week. That, accompanied with the fact that I had five starters on by and one hurt Maurice Jones-Drew, not making excuses, but Rampy, if you expect big numbers out of Stevens Howling again, you're silly, son. You're silly. Alfred Morris, um, he's pretty good, actually much better than Stevens Howling. Great pickup by Seagouch. He's anchoring his 1-6 and six team, which isn't saying much, but believe me, if Seagouch didn't have him, it would be a fiasco. Um... You see Anquan Bolden on by. Christian will fix that, I'm assuming. Brandon Lloyd's questionable, so I'm just going to skip it. Uh, Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, we're going to call him for Cleveland. Really good example of how drafting David Akers in the seventh round can really fuck your team up because that's when you should be taking a receiver. Instead, Rampy took a kicker. That's why he's lacking so much depth at this position. So obviously I'm implying Des Bryant will do better than him. Moving on, Tom Crabtree and Dreesen. Um, great example of two awful players. For some reason, Seagouch actually dropped Antonio Gates last year. I guess his logic was, uh, well, I mean, he's done shit every week except one week. I guess if I drop him because he's on a bye, no one will pick him up. No, Christian, he's Antonio Gates. People are going to pick him up, and that person was me. So... Christian stuck with Tom Crabtree, which is unfortunate for him. So, I I'm actually not going to give anyone the edge because when Dreesen and Crabtree face off, there is no winner. It doesn't matter what the points say. Victor Ballard and Titus Young, neither particularly good, but at least Ballard's a running back. Advantage Ballard. David Akers and Dan Bailey, here's a matchup I can actually enjoy to look at. David Akers is a god amongst men and is the flash here you know those cute little um questions that you get in like english class that are like uh i'll give you an example like cute is to attractive as hideous is to blank in that case it's synonym they give you a word and then fill in the blank in this case it's also going to be synonym flash is to starcraft 1 as blank is to fantasy football. If you don't know, Flash was the god of StarCraft 1, and if you can't figure out who's in the blank for fantasy football, it's David Akers, fellas, because he's that good. Advantage, David Akers. And here we have the 49ers going up against the Dolphins. Usually this wouldn't even be something to talk about, but Miami is playing the Jets, who love to turn it over, led by Mark Dirty Sanchez, but I will give the Niners the edge here because they're so damn good. I'm giving the advantage to Rampy here just because, well, Seagouch's team isn't really looking that good. And this, if this isn't recording, I'm going to be pissy. We're here we have, oh my god, and I've been forgetting to pull this up. I'm sorry. We have Cameron and Spencer. Phil Rivers, Matty Stafford. Rivers is just better, plus he's playing Cleveland. Felix Jones is questionable. Uh, obviously Peterson's going to do better than him. Darren Sproles is like a guaranteed 12 points. Uh, Steven Ridley is not particularly good. Advantage, Sproles. Dar uh, Percy Harvin, very good. Wes Welker hurt. Advantage, Harvin, especially because he already locked 15 points. Lance Moore and Vincent Jackson. Vincent Jackson only got four points this week. Lance Moore probably going to do better than that. 
Jared Cook and Rob, Gronkow Rob Gronkowski. Interesting to note that Gronkowski is questionable. Spencer has his backup, which is cute, but he's already ruled out. So basically whatever body Spencer can fit in here is going to perform Jared Cook. Uh, Demarius Thomas is a very good receiver. He's had three games with over 10 points this year and very few games with under five, although Ryan Matthews, the most overrated player going into this year, he was projected top five numbers. Obviously, he hasn't done that, but he's still a running back, so advantage Matthews. Jason Hansen and Mason Crosby are both very good. Crosby is playing Jacksonville, which is great for him, but I have a feeling Hansen will not perform as well, so advantage Crosby. Giants defense playing Dallas, Bears defense playing Carolina. Matchup-wise, about even. The Bears lead the league in takeaways. There's that. There's your Spencer pick. That one was pretty easy. Not the Combat X pick, but I don't think Spencer's fair, or I don't think Cam Joke fares much of a chance. Here we have our final game. No fried rice and disco. Uh, we'll jump right in, balls deep. Tom Brady, great matchup. RG3, not really. Advantage Brady. Reggie Bush is phenomenal. Willis McGahee is pretty good. Um, yeah, that's all you need to know. I think Reggie Bush will outperform McGahee here. And then Dwyer, who is awful, going up against Arian Foster, who's on by. And if we look at Disco's bench, he doesn't really have anyone to put in. So... Let's just assume both pla both places put up zero. Marcus Colson and Roddy White uh, matchups favors Colson a bit. White is significantly better though. Advantage White. Andre Johnson is on by. Michael Crabtree's career is a joke. Advantage <laughs> advantage Andre Johnson. Heath Miller and Kyle Rudolph. Rudolph only put up 1.7 this week, which is atrocious. Heath Miller, uh, good week last week, I believe if my memory isn't failing me. Advantage Heath Miller. Brandon Hartline. Sorry people that picked him up or traded to get him. He's never going to have another week like that 30-point performance again. Miles Austin will outperform him. Matt Prater. And, or, sorry. Yeah, Matt, Matt Prater and... Bri is his name Matt Bryant? I can't remember. But it's the Atlanta kicker that's really freaking good. Will outperform Prater. Just as Austin will outperform Hartline. And the Falcons' defense will probably outperform the Jets' defense because Michael Vick loves to turn the ball over almost as he almost as much as he enjoys killing dogs. This has been your Twiff Week Eight preview, guys. Um, about the tardiness of the last one, uh, it's all YouTube's fault. They took a dump on my chest and failed the upload three times. I hope you enjoyed this week's Twiff. No fried rice gets the edge, and make sure to leave me that comment. See you later.